we're being invaded. And an international army is determined to conquer the enemy. The foe is an alien, in more ways than one. Tiny, but deadly, capable of overcoming the most challenging conditions. It's voracious, too. From the moment it arrived, it began eating everything and anything in sight. Meet Taroas volatans, the red lionfish. From its home in the Indo-Pacific, this predator suddenly appeared in the Atlantic 30 years ago and is ruthlessly increasing its range. Now, wherever lionfish are spotted in the southern Atlantic Ocean, there's little else to see. It's feasting its way from the Gulf of Mexico up the eastern seaboard. They prey on local fish, compete with native marine predators, and leave a path of grim destruction through some of the most beautiful reefs in the world. A single lionfish residing on a coral reef can reduce native plant-eating fish by 79%, allowing algae to grow unchecked on coral reefs. Lionfish uh, can consume as high as 6% of their body weight per day uh, over time at some of the higher temperatures. And when calculating that feeding rate, uh, we've learned that it can have quite an impact on the fish community. Some scientists say it's the worst invader on our planet. The spiny fish seems unstoppable. But researchers are combining their expertise and brain power. They have a plan. Dr. James Morris of the National Ocean Service will collect lionfish specimens from a wreck off the North Carolina coast. This is a site that we've been collecting a number of lionfish over the years. These fish that, we're bringing, that the divers are bringing up today, we're going to be using for research at our laboratory. It's the first step to solving the mystery of how the invasive species got into an ocean on the other side of the world. A huge number of lionfish lurk around the wreck, and the researchers collect 30 specimens from about 145 feet down. Lionfish aren't good swimmers, but they're still tricky to catch. The poisoned barbs along their dorsal fin can deliver an extremely painful venom. When the captives are brought to the surface, their bellies have swollen due to the rapid ascent. A quick pierce releases air trapped in their swim bladders, and the fish settle into their temporary prison. A few are dissected to extract DNA, critical to solving the mystery of where they came from and how they got into the Caribbean. Geneticist Thomas Schultz at Duke University can determine how many individuals were involved in the species explosion. We can actually look at the amount of genetic diversity that's present in these invading populations and try to track back to see what's the minimum number of fish that were introduced into the United States initially. The results are terrifying. Fewer than 10 individual lionfish were apparently released by hobbyists into the nearby ocean. This may still happen. Only Florida has banned the importation of red lionfish. It is a very popular aquarium species that is imported into the U.S. from um, Indonesia, from the Philippines. Uh, we know that many thousands of lionfish have been imported into the United States in the last de decade. 
aquarium owners, sometimes released unwanted captives into local waters. Less than a dozen fish are responsible for the sweeping invasion of the South Atlantic. In the wild, they might live 15 years. The creature reproduces at lightning speed. Lionfish have a very robust and uh, vigorous reproductive biology. They are capable of reproducing every three to four days. They cap the females can release over two million eggs per year, uh, and they can become sexually mature within a year. Armed with this knowledge, a team from Canada begins to establish a combat protocol in the Bahamas. On the island of Eleuthera, Nicola Smith conducts a survey that reveals the scale of the problem. fish everywhere, but few of the other species she'd normally expect to find. I'm very worried about the future of marine ecosystems in the Bahamas because of the lionfish invasion. If they could eradicate every lionfish within a specific zone, would it impact the growing invasion? Her team collects every lionfish they see. Even baby fish cannot be spared. In the Bahamas, large groupers and lionfish observe each other without aggression. Unlike the dynamic in both the Indo-Pacific and the Red Sea, this means the invasive fish doesn't have any natural predators here to keep it in check. Nicola and her team revisit the reef where lionfish were removed after three months. And again after six months, they're pleased with the results. We found that if you remove lionfish once every three months or once every six months from coral reefs, we were able to reduce lionfish numbers by 50% or more than if we'd done absolutely nothing at all. What's even more exciting is the fact that removing lionfish only once every six months seems to have the same ecological impact as removing lionfish once every three months. We can get the same ecological effect for half the amount of effort. This means that once cleared, a reef can be monitored twice per year instead of quarterly. But there's bad news too. Lionfish have colonized virtually every marine habitat in the Bahamas, from shallow water coral reefs, to deep water coral reefs, to mangroves, to seagrass areas, to marinas, to sandy beaches around artificial structures. It's impossible for humans to scour every potential lionfish territory and there's no help from native marine life either. There are really no natural predators that have been documented to actually be preying upon lionfish at a rate that can control their local densities. Lionfish have been seen hunting as deep as 600 feet near the marine park on Rotan. Still lionfish down there. Oh, and they're not going to go away. There's only one ocean hunter here that's capable of ruthlessly plundering every depth where the tough lionfish are found. The shark. But if the local groupers won't eat the enemies, will the local sharks? 
scientists Nick Bach and Jacobo Palancin try an experiment. Resident sharks don't recognize lionfish as prey because the species is alien to their hunting grounds. But sharks can learn. With a little patience, the team trains reef sharks to hunt lionfish. Introducing the lionfish to the sharks, which is an, a new organism that they never seen before, especially in the Caribbean, has helped because we only did a couple of times, probably two or three months of it. And then after that, we haven't even fed the sharks with them. And it seems that they have recognized the lionfish as a food source without us feeding them to them. It's a great start, but the sharks can only serve as regulators in the areas they normally patrol. As apex predators, there just aren't enough sharks. And the lionfish invasion is out of control. There's one more predator that could provide a natural solution, us. The Bahamian government has a revolutionary plan. Eat them. One Nassau chef is leading the way. But when you do have it on your menu, a lot of people are so excited to have it because they can't really have it any other place. So all in all, it's a win-win situation. You save the environment, and you have a good uh, tasting product on your menu. Once the spines are removed, the flesh is delicate and tasty. Everybody thought that the meat was poison because they understood that the lionfish had a poisonous venom. The people are now growing out of that fear and began to eat the, the meat. The lionfish problem is such a huge problem that one study actually shows that it has reduced prey species down to about 65%. So what are we going to do about it? We're going to eat them to beat them. 